And one of those stories that we don't have full answers on, but you could kind of see coming. Uh, it looks like the X-Men line, the Dawn of X titles, some of them won't be coming after all. Which ones, we don't fully know. But let's go into this story and what we know, what we're learning from uh, Jordan White and the X-Men line. Hey everybody, this is Perch. This is one of those things where I think everybody could kind of see some of this coming and it's indicative of marketing getting ahead of kind of publishing plans. And also it's it's if you kind of really look at this, it's it's an indication of how um, you know, in, in some cases, uh, rapid these books are coming out. An idea happens, people start promoting it, some promo art is drawn, and then uh, it's, it gets solicited. But now you learn that you know a lot of that book hasn't actually been produced, <laughs> and um, it's just interesting to see kind of the, the timelines are tight in a lot of cases. Um, but Jordan White uh, decided to make uh, some statements around kind of the X Men books, and he starts out with uh, what's what's a very pragmatic, um, clear statement of the you know the basically the plan of publishing right now is very agile and shifts with circumstances. And they had an X summit and they made a number of plans. And then uh, based on shifting circumstances of the world, the industry, the company and the creators, some books that were going to happen are not going to happen. And books that uh, didn't exist now will, that there will be some shuffling around. Now, a lot of people will immediately kind of cite COVID as a big reason for this. And that's, that's the elephant in the room. It's certainly a big part of it. But uh, there's more to it than just COVID. Uh, I think the other thing that was happening, if you think about where the world was at in January before this stuff started rolling, is there was a lot of rumblings and murmuring of just too many Dawn of X titles, that they were going too far too fast. And we we're seeing a bit of a pushback. When I say pushback, I don't mean people complaining on Twitter. I mean, in the sales numbers, in the reporting, we were seeing drops that were maybe a little bit more stark than to be expected. And uh, certainly with the huge buildup and huge push of uh, House of X powers of 10, I think there was a belief that this was kind of the new gold mine. And at least, you know, people started asking, are, did we go too far too fast? Uh, and, and, you know, too many titles all at once. And so this kind of second, almost 2.5 or, you know, wave 2.5, wave three, kind of beyond the giant size books, the Fantastic Four, X-Men, Wolverine, and so on, were a number of different titles. We knew one of them was Children of the Atom, which was billed as a kind of a, you know, children who had similar to X-Men powers. Um, we also had a Peter Milligan and Mike Allred excellent um, which wasn't necessarily Dawn of X, but intended to kind of spin out. Um, that that title remains in limbo. And then we heard about uh, a handful of books around uh, Moira um, and X Corp that were were discussed as coming. Uh, that that were intended to be part of the plan, and then uh, but they hadn't been solicited yet. They were kind of all there. So we don't know which ones are, are canceled or which are changing, but of the things that we haven't seen solicitations for, haven't come out, it's that Children of the Atom, the unknown, unnamed Moira X, X Corp, and this, um, uh, this ecstatic uh, follow-up, uh, excellent. Um, and then there was also, I think, as I recall, some indications of possibly some solo spinoff books uh, as well. It's like I, I remember there was a, a vague comment of after Giant Size X-Men that some of these other characters might spin off and, and do more. Uh, the other thing was that there was a promise of a big X-Men event in the winter or some kind of big, big thing that would be happening. And, and there was talk, no, nothing official, but people were speculating of a Avengers versus X-Men 2, largely because the storyline has the, the groups arguably in conflict at some point um, or something else. And so it was, the, the comment was just, you know, we have this Ten of Swords, which would be like an inner company or in your inner line crossover and then you'd have a really event a proper event toward the end of the year well now with the events just getting pushed back and changed and marvel kind of going uh hard on uh, king and black or king of black king king and black uh you know the the null event um empire getting pushed back outlawed kind of being scaled back a little bit 
and um, you know, and and then of course, Ten of Swords itself. Maybe that plan has changed as well. Maybe that event isn't coming out. Um, we again don't know one way or some complete speculation on my part. Uh, the other thing we do know in terms of expansion is we know that uh, Ten of Swords came just under doubling in terms of the amount of titles that were going to cross into it and and what was going to happen. So it it expanded. Um, how did this happen? I mean, nobody, you know, again, speculation, I think with the shutdown and with some of the conversations that are taking place, maybe the argument was, hey, we need to give some of these titles an extra little boost that maybe they didn't have before. So tying them into the Ten of Swords event makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, that would be a good thing for us to do. So, you know, Ten of Swords got bigger. Um, maybe Children of the Atom is still coming. A lot of work was created for that, uh, but it's hard to tell You know how much it was promo art, how much it was interior art. We know at least some interior art was made because we saw some examples of it. We don't know how far it went. Maybe this becomes a one-shot or a spinoff and they try and put it out. Who knows? But it looks like that title at least is is got a big question mark around it. Moirex, Xporp. And then I think you know Jordan White didn't mention it, but it did. I think this this idea of this this bigger event, um, either one of two things happened: either that was a false story, and that bigger event was never intended to take place, or that big event is definitely getting pushed back or changed based on how everything is shuffling around. And and like I mentioned, you know, COVID is going to be the thing that everybody comments on and everybody uh, uh, really highlights as the the big the big factor here. But I think prior to COVID, you did have that feeling of X Men exhaustion and and that they were. They were just doing too much. They were they were uh, digging that mine dry too rapidly, and were going to burn things out uh, before they they all had a chance to to really recover. So um, definitely, there's there's some changes here. Uh, it, it I think by you know on the surface, I think it's wise to continue to look at it. I think you know Jordan White is saying that um, you know the plan is very agile and shifts with circumstances. I mean, one would hope that's always the case. In the last two years or so at Marvel, it's kind of felt like they get indicators that it's a bad idea to proceed and they just do it anyway because it's like, the train's in motion, we're not turning around now. It's kind of had that feeling to it. So maybe this is an indication that, you know, hey, we're, we're actually going to relook at things and be a little bit more cautious about this stuff and and be nimble, you know, use our use our opportunity to to, you know, listen to kind of what's going on in the marketplace and respond accordingly. The X-Men line in general, and maybe Ten of Swords is just where they're going to do it, it does feel like it kind of jumped off the track a little bit. It's There's some titles there, people are excited about things, but it's just, it feels a bit aimless uh, now. Uh, Marvel in general feels a bit aimless, uh, with the exception of Thor, feels like it's kind of, it's got a track, it's moving on. Um, it feels like the uh, the Venom, the Null story, despite all that, it, it kind of has a movement. We're starting to see kind of how Empire kind of strikes out, but it feels like the wind's been knocked out of its sails quite a bit. And X-Men just feels like it's it's needing kind of a moment of uh, rebirth, or not rebirth is the wrong word, just, just to recenter it. We are getting in just uh, you know a very short amount of time, July 15th, I'm not sure when this video will go up, so if it's possible to come out, the free comic book day for X-Men, uh, which is going to foreshadow uh, an upcoming epic tale from Tom Taylor and uh, Yvonne Coelho. Um, and this this big story was, again, it was kind of initially thought that this was uh, an event. This was kind of the big event uh, that was coming out, but now who knows uh, what this exact is. Um, epic tale, is it a story? Is it a crossover? Is it a... You know, him taking over one of the titles, nobody really knows. So I think some of this is going to get revealed then. I should really make sure this video gets out before that. Uh, but what do you think? Is it good they're pulling back, changing their model up a little bit? Anything that uh, you really want to see that you think you might not now? Anything that uh, you would suggest maybe they go further? Or is there other books that you think need a, a relook? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Comic Perch. Shoot me an email at comics with an S perch. But most importantly, thanks for listening.